When we think of radio frequency, we may not be thinking about how that form of energy relates to our eyes. In this episode of OcuTalk, Dr. John Reggie will be talking about MGD-related dry eye and how radio frequency applied to the skin can help improve the quality of life of dry eye sufferers. Dr. Reggie? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OcuTalk. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us from Shelburne Optometry in Ontario, Canada, Dr. John Reggie. Dr. Reggie, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you again for joining us, taking the time out of your day to join us again. Thank you so much, Dr. Reggie. And before we get started, Dr. Reggie, I was hoping that maybe you can introduce yourself to our audience, let them know a little bit about your background and your specialty. Of course. So um, my name is John Reggie. Um, so the, let's set the story. So it starts off me, Indian kid, born in Saudi Arabia, grew up in, uh, moved to Canada, grew up in Ontario, escaped the harsh winters, moved to Houston, Texas, and graduated from the optometry school from there, and then moved back to BC, worked there for a bit, returned back to Ontario in 2019. So lots of variety. Uh, but I like it that way. So even with work, uh, one of my clinics I fly out to, the other clinics that I, I drive to. And then I have varied specialties as well, uh, including ocular surface disease, including using specialty contact lenses for that, and then treating the myopic pandemic with myopia control. So just your average John that likes to, to have a little bit of variety in life too. I like the average John. Thank you, Dr. Reggie. Appreciate that. And uh, we appreciate you being here again. Thank you so much. And uh, Dr. Reggie, for our discussion today, we were hoping that maybe you can talk a little bit about uh, the treatment of dry eye using radio frequency. Uh, this is a very interesting topic. I, I know typically on OcuTalk, we talk a lot about, you know, treating dry eye and dry eye itself. So we were actually wondering before we get started on that, uh, we'd like to hear in your own words what you, what, what, what is dry eye? I think that's a great question. I think dry eye, although it sounds very straightforward, it's a very complicated disease that we're still working on trying to fully understand. Uh, essentially, the way I think about it is it's a disruption of the homeostasis of the ocular surface. So if you don't have a healthy ocular surface, it affects the entire ocular system. So the whole system can be compromised. So essentially, dry eye is just a breakdown of the regular balance of the surface of your eyeball. Interesting. Thank you for that, Dr. Reggie. We appreciate that. And so what are the symptoms that we should be on the lookout for that alert us that say we, we, we may have dry eye. Yeah, I think there's a lot of symptoms that can, you know, uh, trigger the, the diagnosis of dry eye. I think the common ones that you'll hear all the time is like itchiness, tired eyes, feeling like something's in your eye, or even blurred vision. But the problem with dry eye is the symptoms of dry eye are so vast and so nonspecific that almost every patient might have a symptom or two of dry eye. But as an optometrist, it's, it's our duty to kind of parse out these details or their symptoms, figure out like, what's the frequency? When did this start? How long has it been going on for and pair it with the rest of the signs that you see, along with like their systemic conditions, their medical, con uh, medical history to truly understand what kind of dry eye that we're dealing with. Well, perfect. And thank you for that information, Dr. Reggie. And so when should someone go see you? And when, like when I, when, what should, when, when should I say like, okay, I need to go see Dr. Reggie to see what's going on with me. So when to go see a doctor or an optometrist. So I'm a big believer in preventative medicine. I'd say we should stay, always stay on top of our health uh, and catch a disease before it, ca it causes like significant sequelae in our health. So my answer to that would be every year. And if you haven't seen your optometrist this year, it's time to go now. <laughs> so even if your glasses, you know, seem like they're working fine, there's a lot of conditions that including dry eye that are asymptomatic, meaning that you don't get any symptoms of it until you figure out what's going on. So my answer to the question, when you sh when should you go see your doctor? Say now. Well, definitely. If, if you haven't been to your eye doctor yet, please go now. That, thank you for that, Dr. Reggie. We appreciate that. And so can you tell us a little bit about radio frequency and the treatment of dry eye? Um, how does that work? Yeah, for sure. So to understand radio frequency, I think it's, um, let me explain one aspect of dry eye that radio frequency is really good at treating. So the one aspect of dry eye is meibomian gland dysfunction or meibomian gland disease. Um, to put it simply, there's three layers of tears 
And one of those layers is the oil layer. The oil layer floats to the top of the tears, keeps the tears from evaporating away. Now this oil is produced by these glands called meibomian glands, and they're based uh, right below your eyelashes, both on your lower lid and your top lid. Now meibomian gland disease is when these oils or these glands are obstructed or the, the um, quality of the oils isn't the greatest. So how we can fix this is with, is with heat. Heat can melt these oils, remove obstruction, and then create like a nice, uh, not so viscous material that it's flowing through well. So things like warm compresses at home can help with that. But the problem is with moderate or severe forms of dry eye, that warm compress that you're using at home, it's not gonna cut it. Because technically you need these glands to get up to about 40 degrees Celsius. But if you do 40 degrees Celsius over your eyelid, you're gonna burn your eyelid. So that's where radio frequency comes in. Radio frequency is a neat kind of technology where it bypasses the eyelid tissue and it directly, directly heats those meibomian glands, gets it up to that 40 degrees Celsius so it can fully drain and liquefy those glands. So the body has a better chance of creating new oils through an unobstructed channel. So that's how radio frequency aims to work in tree dry eye. Well, excellent. Thank you for that explanation, Dr. Reggie. We appreciate that. And so let's say now that I, I, I've decided to go see a doctor, like something's going on. What should a patient expect uh, when they go see you for their appointments? So for the appointment, so essentially we start everybody off with a dry eye assessment. Then once, if you are doing radio frequency, how it starts is usually about 45 minute appointment. And then we have one of our, our techs start off by treating the periocular area which is like the area around your eye. So they use this probe, which is about a dime size, it's like metal, and they rub it around your, uh, around your eye and it feels like a hot stone massage. So it feels nice, but what it's doing is it's warming up the tissues around the eyelid. So there's less treatment time on the eyelid itself. So then once that's all warmed up, it takes about seven minutes, I go in with a probe and I treat over the eyelid itself. Now, this also feels like, you know, warm metal kind of going over your eye. Um, generally it feels comfortable and there's ultrasound gel that's over it. So it's, it's smooth there, but it can get uncomfortable or get a little bit hot at certain points. But I always tell my patients, we got to understand that we are treating a disease right now. Like as, as much as we'd like to make it feel great, there's damage that we're trying to work on. So that little bit of discomfort that you might experience for about five minutes is outweighed by the huge benefits that you get afterwards. So anyway, after we, we've done this treatment, which takes about five minutes on the eyelid itself, uh, we clean up the eyelid, use some eyelid cleansers, use some artificial tears, get the person to feel a bit better. And then after that, you're all done. And the great thing about RF is there really isn't a lot of downtime. So after the treatment, it's not like you have to wear sunglasses. It's not like your, your, your eyes are blurry for two hours. You're ready to go. Like right after the treatment, you're good to go after that. Oh, perfect. Well, thank you for walking us through that, Dr. Reggie. And uh, so you talked about how long the procedure takes. Is So I wanted to know, is there multiple procedures that have to go into this? Like, do I, do I just go one time and I'm good? Like, we're good to go? Or do you want me to come back every couple of weeks? How, how many more appointments are involved? Yeah, that's a good question. So it really depends on the person itself and the severity of the dry eye. But usually for most of my moderate to severe cases, we do like three or four sessions. And these sessions, like I said, are about 45 minutes long and they're separated by a month's time. And then when you start experiencing this relief, most patients start feeling it after the first session. But it's really after the third or the fourth session that you're going to get these most long-term results. So these oils have really kind of melted out and these glands have had a chance to kind of regrow and these oils are really kind of flowing healthily there. There's no obstructions at all. So usually by the third or the fourth session, which should be about three or four months from when you start the treatment is where you really start to notice the benefits. And then what we do is usually we'll, we'll take a look at it and we'll evaluate it next year to see if we need to do the treatment again. For most cases, we find that we can skip a year. So we do the radio frequency treatment three to four sessions one year, skip a year, the following year we repeat that again. Well, perfect. Again, thank you for that information, Dr. Reggie. And uh, you talked about like how often you want to see your patients come back. Um, are, is there an ideal outcome that you're looking for every time like someone comes back? Like, hey, like this, the, you're, you're exactly where I need you to be. Like, oh, okay, I'll see you next year for your regular appointment. Right, what ideal outcomes are you looking for? So the ideal outcome for radio frequency is just, you know, we're looking for the patient's symptoms. Do they have an improved quality of life? Do they have healthy, refreshed, and lubricated eyes? 
And you realize once you once you really start seeing these patients with severe dry eye, how huge of a difference that can make for their quality of life. So the outcome that we're looking for with this is essentially, is a person happy? Is a person comfortable with their eyes? Is their quality of life improved uh, pre, uh, post-treatment? And the other benefit of uh, RUF radio frequency, which I didn't mention, was uh, skin tightening. So collagen is tightened and strengthened when you're applying radio frequency. Actually, radio frequency is used in dermatology for cosmetic procedures, which is like tighten up your skin, reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, crow's feet, all that kind of stuff. So this also happens when you're treating the eye. So crow's feet starts to disappear, eyelid drooping can lift up a little bit. So after this, I've had patients come back purely for the cosmetic aspect of it. So they'll be like, oh yeah, can you do my cheek? Can you do my like neck? I was like, yeah, sure, we can do that, might as well. And the other thing is I mentioned about, you know, there's no downtime. Oftentimes patients will also schedule their procedures before they have an important event coming up because immediately after the treatment, there's like a little bit of lid edema and like tightening or plumping of the skin. So people have done this right before a wedding or like a photo shoot because your skin looks like it's glowing. It's a little bit more plump. So lots of positive outcomes coming from this uh, radio frequency treatment. Wow. I, I did not know that it, that it was so involved with the dermatology. And I didn't know people just did that just for cosmetic reasons. That's pretty amazing. So uh, excellent. Thank you again for that information, Dr. Reggie. Uh, so what patients would you say are candidates for radio frequency treatment? So I think radio frequency, because of the safety profile of it, there isn't a lot of drawbacks to it, right? So most of my patients that are suffering from dry eye that have tried at-home therapies, radio frequency is a really good option for a lot of them. The only, there are a couple of drawbacks, you know, if the person is having an inactive infection or there's a lot of uh, ocular inflammation, you don't want to further exacerbate that inflammation by applying heat onto the eye or tattoos are another thing. So uh, radio frequency doesn't uh, permeate well through tattoos. So they, they have tattoos around their eye or their eyelid or piercings on their eyebrow, maybe not the best candidate, but for the most part, most people are good candidates for radio frequency. Well, perfect, excellent. Thank you for that, Dr. Reggie. And so as far as uh, take-home treatments, do you have like a take-home regimen that you give to your patients or is there like in anything that you want, like that you want them to use to leave your practice and use long term. Like, what is your um, process? So there's definitely like some take home therapies to to use, and it depends patient by patient. But the one thing that I always talk about to every patient is lifestyle modification. So taking breaks from screens, blinking more, water intake, and omega three supplementation. With omega three, is particular in Canada, there was a study that came out recently said that most omega-3s are rancid, they're not effective. And I, I'm sure that America is kind of on the same, same uh, vein there. So it's important to look at the nutrition values of the omega-3 that you're taking, particularly the EHA and the DPA values. They have to hit a certain amount that you're getting per day for it to be actually effective for your eyes. So that's one of the things. In addition to those things is using artificial tears that are preservative free and warm compresses. Warm compresses, I'm a, I'm a big believer in. I always tell my patients um, with flossing, you don't floss once you have gum disease. You floss to prevent that gum disease. In the same way, you don't start using these warm compresses just when your eyes are feeling sore or tired. Make that a habit, a part of your daily routine so you prevent that atrophy of the myoglobin glands. Well, excellent advice, Dr. Reggie. Thank you for that. We appreciate it. And uh, what other new technologies or new developments uh, should we be on the lookout for uh, when in regards to radio frequency? So radio frequency in itself is, I mean, like I said, it started off being um, a process used in dermatology. And then we have saw the effects of it that it can have on the eyes. Similarly, there's other tools that dermatology has used that now optometry is starting to see, hey, there's a, there's a focus that we can use with that technology as well. I think the big other name after radio frequency, the other type of light technology is IPL or infrared pulse technology. That's really cool because that uses a totally different wavelength and it treats lots of different types of dry eye, like rosacea is one of them or inflammation. So totally different mechanism, but it can treat a whole other range of, of dry eye. So we don't have that yet here at Shelburne Optometry, but I work with Dr. Krupa Chitani. She's the owner of Shelburne Optometry and she's got 
this huge passion for trying out new technology, especially when it comes to dry eye. So I encourage all my patients to check out Shelburne Optometry and all the latest tech that we have coming out over there. Uh, well, definitely go. Everyone go check out Shelburne Optometry in Ontario, Canada. Uh, Dr. Reggie, uh, is there anything else that you'd like to tell our audience before we leave today? Yeah, for sure. So I love educating the public about eye health and how to prevent about conditions and things like that. But recently, there's been a topic that's been really close to my heart and to my home. So in Ontario, Canada, uh, recently, there's been a, an issue about chronic underfunding of the vision care system in our province where many seniors, children, and healthcare providers are being affected by it. And that has to do with a lot of government regulations. So before, rather than going into all the, the nitty gritty of it, I encourage everyone to visit saveicare.ca to find out more information about this issue happening in Ontario, Canada, and how you can help. Other than that, um, you know, I just want to thank you, Nick, and everybody li for listening to me. And I hope you liked my explanations. Like I said, I love, I love educating people about eye conditions, particularly through uh, hand-drawn pictures that I draw. Uh, you can find out more about that on my Instagram. It's johnreggie.idoc. And to find out more about some of that content. Well, Dr. Reggie, thank you so much for being here. We loved your explanations and uh, we, we learned a lot today. Everyone, that was Dr. John Reggie from Shelburne Optometry in Ontario, Canada. Dr. Reggie, thank you again so much for joining us today. Thank you, Nick.